In February 2007, a horrendous crime rocked the community of Abilene, Texas. A 13-year-old boy named Paris Bennett committed an act of violence that stunned everyone. He took the life of his little sister, Ella, just four years old, while their mother was at work. The very first thing they said to me was, they said, Ella's been hurt. And they were like, well, she's dead. And that just stopped me. And then I was like, well, where is Paris? And they said, well, we have him. Paris is the one who killed her. And that's when everything stopped making sense. The brutality and planning of the crime which shocked the police upon realizing that it had all been done by a child. They wanted to know the family details to understand what was going on in the child's mind. For me, I don't know. What did he have against his sister? How could someone so young come up with all the horrible details by himself? And what were his true motivations? We will delve into Paris Bennett's troubled mind to understand how he came to be filled with rage and darkness and how this cheerful child became a monster to his family. I found a way to take away both her children in one fell swoop. This is the story of a family crime told by its protagonists, where we will immerse ourselves in the details of this tragic event and will open the question, does evil really exist? Everything happened on the night of February 5th 2007, in Abilene, Texas, United States. Charity Bennett, a single mother, left home to go to work at the Buffalo Wild Wings restaurant, where she worked as a waitress. She left her children, Paris, 13, and Ella, only four, with the babysitter, who usually took care of them and said goodbye to her children as she did every day. However, she never imagined it would be the last time she would see her daughter alive. Paris, the eldest son, convinced her caregiver to go home early since Ella was in bed and nothing bad was going to happen because his mother was already on her way home. The boy was so sure of his words that the woman agreed and left the two little ones alone at home. It was here that Paris decided to carry out his plan. He crept into Ella's room and began to attack her in disturbing ways. After inflicting profound physical harm, he inflicted 17 thrusts with a kitchen utensil to his little sister's small body. Seeing his sister lifeless, he decided to telephone a friend with whom he talked for six minutes about various topics with the tranquility of someone who would never commit a crime. It was only after this call that the little boy decided to call 911 to confess his crime. Abilene 911, go ahead. I, 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 I can't say we killed somebody. You think you killed somebody? No, I know I did. My sister. Okay, where's your sister now? She's in the bed. Is she breathing? No, I love she. I feel so messed up. Okay, calm down, okay? I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Is she bleeding anywhere? Yeah, she's bleeding all over the bed because I stabbed her. What did you stab her with? A knife. The young man told them that he was hallucinating and that he saw his little sister as a demon that's why he decided to attack her. The 911 operator convinced him to apply resuscitation maneuvers to his little sister, but the boy only pretended to follow instructions. He never wanted to save Ella. The police could not believe the scene they were witnessing when they arrived at the children's home. It was a bedroom. There was a lot of on the right side of the bed by the headboard. I still see her lying on the floor. This Gruesome. It's awful. At half past 12 in the morning, the police arrived at Charity's work to give her the worst news a mother could receive. The very first thing they said to me was they said Ella's been hurt. Well, as a parent, if you think your child's been hurt, that's the first thing you want to do. So you leave. Yeah. You'll take me to where she is now. You just told me Ella was hurt. And they were like, well, she's dead. And that just and then I was like, well, where is Paris? And they said, well, we have him. Paris is the one who hurt. And that's when everything stopped making sense. In 
just an instant, Charity's life fell apart. A few hours ago, she had hugged her two little ones, and suddenly, she was left with neither. Distraught, she would ask detectives to see her children, but Paris was isolated in custody, so she would beg them to at least let her go home to see her daughter Ella's body. They took the mother to the crime scene, and she saw the sad reality. It was around 5 o'clock in the morning when they finally told me that they were going to bring her out. I needed to see her to accept the fact that she was gone. They unzipped the bag right under her chin, and I just remember screaming, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I wasn't there. Charity couldn't believe what had happened to her little ones. Why would Paris do that to his darling little sister? How was a 13-year-old capable of such a level of planning, almost to the point of evil? While the mother was devastated, the detectives will try to find out Paris' motives. After many contradictions, the little boy will tell them a truth that will make this cruel and horrifying crime even more twisted. His original plan was to kill his mother when she returned home. One of the reasons why I chose to kill my sister and not someone else is because I knew that by doing so I could hurt my mother in the worst possible way. Here the detective's questions would begin to determine the reasons for the hatred towards Charity and Ella, and how anyone at that age would be capable of cold-bloodedly premeditating an attack. So they will try to dig into the family's past to see at what point an evil seed began to grow inside Paris. What the police didn't know was that Charity had done something reprehensible in the past that unleashed her son's extreme rage. Charity's life had not been easy, her parents had a dysfunctional relationship, and when she was six years old, her father's life was taken with multiple wounds to his back in their Texas home. The main suspect was her own mother, who apparently conspired against her husband. Although she was acquitted and the case was concluded, Charity was always left with the feeling that her mother was to blame for her father's crime. Her mother married multiple times and abused vices, creating an unstable home for a young girl. Despite this, Charity was a good student and very athletic, but she began to have mental health problems, which caused her to start a drug addiction. When everything around her was falling apart, a new life would save hers. I was a crazy teenager. By the time I was 17 years old, I was strung out on heroin, had skipped the 10th grade, and then graduated high school with honors about a year after I got sober and I met Paris's dad. I was 18, totally not in the plan, but from the minute I found out that I was pregnant, I immediately fell in love with Paris. And I used to tell him that one of these days, you're gonna have to remind me to tell you how you saved my life. 13 years later, of course, he destroyed it. She gave up her bad habits when she got pregnant and decided to go ahead and raise her son. However, she would receive news that would be the prelude to the tragedy they were about to experience. Paris's father left not long after I got pregnant. And then when Paris was 17 months old, he showed up and it was fairly obvious that something was not right. His father was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, with audio and visual hallucinations. She cut off relations with him, and years later, she met Ella's father, who was also absent from her upbringing and had serious problems with vices. So Charity had to continue her life alone while trying to create an environment of love and respect inside her home for her two little ones. Paris was a child genius with an IQ of 141, which is an average well above the rest of the population, and even had outstanding intelligence characteristics. However, something bad was going on inside him, and some signs went unnoticed. Mom, what's your least favorite word? Least favorite word? Your least favorite sentence. I don't know. Your parents are children? Despite these strange times, the three created a loving home. With a gifted son and a little baby girl, Charity did everything she can to make sure her family had everything they needed. But the stress of raising her children alone, overwork, and financial pressures 
led her to relapse into drug abuse. The first time was when Paris was nine years old, and the second time shortly before the crime. Although she managed to overcome these moments, apparently it would not be the same for her son, who would begin to hold a particular grudge against his progenitor. Once a prisoner, he would reveal his true motive for taking his sister's life and not his mother's. The day after the crime, Charity went to visit Paris. She was worried about him, not only to know why he had transformed himself into this being full of anger and violence, but because in spite of everything, he was still her son. And when I saw him, the only thing I felt was so happy to see my child, because he was the only one left. I started hugging him and just crying, cried forever. And then I realized at some point that he wasn't hugging me back. Her loving son was now a cold and defiant being, with an attitude not befitting a child of his age. He turned to his mother with a phrase that would strike a deep chord in Charity's heart. He said to me, you always said that you would never be able to kill somebody unless they hurt one of your children. So what are you gonna do now? It was here that the mother had the suspicion that it wasn't a hallucination that had possessed Paris on the night of the crime that was responsible for what he had done, but rather his attitude of defiance and unrepentance. It led her to arrive to some painful conclusions about her son. And so I went to see him that night. I was like, I don't believe you anymore. I think you killed your sister on purpose, did you? All of a sudden, he became a completely different person. He looked at me and he said, y'all are all so If he was so angry with his mother, why did he take it out on his little sister? This was an unknown that the police couldn't clear up until two years after the crime. Paris made a macabre confession to his mother. For many, many years, there was just this hot, uh, flaming ball of wrath in the pit of my stomach. And it was directed at my mother. And one of the reasons why I chose my sister and not someone else is because I knew that by doing so, I could hurt my mother in the worst possible way. Because I had always known as a child that the most devastating thing to my mother would be the loss of one of her children. And I found a way to take away both her children in one fell swoop. The darkness with which Paris planned everything is hard to believe. A 13-year-old boy carried out the whole thing and showed no sign of remorse. Paris wanted to punish his mother because she relapsed back into drugs. I remember being angry all day long and thinking all day long. I want to hurt somebody. I felt betrayed. I felt neglected. And really just a child's selfish thought of, am I not important enough? Filled with anger, he wouldn't forgive his mother for relapsing. And the only thing he wanted was for his mother to pay for the rest of his life. Paris's attitude in confessing was not normal, and the mother would want to know why her son was not showing any sign of empathy for her or for his little sister. After Paris's sentencing, his assessor told me, you deserve to know that your son is a sociopath. Paris was labeled a sociopath, a person who suffers from an extreme and obvious personality disorder and antisocial behavior, which leads him to have no feelings of moral responsibility for his actions. It was with this diagnosis that his words and actions began to make sense to the grieving mother. Did you love your sister? Very much. You had no fundamental problem with her existence? It's a question that I can't give an easy answer to. There were times where I adored my sister. There were times where she was the wind that blew the storm clouds out of my sky. And then there are times where she was the wind blowing the storm clouds into the sky. And I'm sure I'm not the only sibling who's ever struggled with resentment and jealousy. And I'm not the only person who's ever sibling. With the confession, 
Paris was sentenced six months after the crime to 40 years in prison, the maximum sentence for juveniles in Texas. In 2007, he will be eligible to request a review of his case for parole, but his mother does not want this to happen. Can a sociopath change? Will he still have intentions of killing his mother when he is released? Charity has been trying to get by without either of her two children. She created the She Foundation, the Empathy, Love, Lessons and Action Foundation, in memory of her daughter to help victims of violent crimes like hers, and also for families who must deal with the justice system when they have someone affected by mental illness. Despite the terrible act Paris did, she is convinced that she must not abandon her son, at least as long as he remains in prison. But I really love my son, and at the time he was 13 years old, and so I felt like he really needed to have a parent still uh, to help him navigate through the criminal justice system here in America. Charity rebuilt her life and became pregnant with her third child, Phoenix, with whom she now lives in Savannah, Georgia. Although she regularly visits Paris, she's also clear that she must protect her baby from him. I've made it clear to Paris that while he's incarcerated, I will be there for him. But as soon as he is released, he probably will not be in my life because he hasn't changed and I'm not putting myself or my other child in that position. In spite of a mother's unconditional love and that she forgave him for his atrocity, Charity doesn't think her son will give up his sociopathic instincts and that having him at large is a profound danger to her and her young son. She is convinced that her son will not change and lives in constant fear as the years for his release approach. The last person that I contacted was Dr. Park Dietz, and he told me that I should stop spending so much money on my son and I should start spending my money on changing my identity and hiding for when my son got out of prison. Paris, for his part, says he has had a positive evolution during his stay in jail. He has had time to reflect on what happened that night, and when asked about how he feels now as an adult for taking his sister's life, he is a little more sensitive than he was when he was 13. I feel a wrenching in my chest. <laughs> and I feel a twisting of my guts. <laughs> there are times where I'm overcome with self-loathing. Hey, mama, 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 mama. There are times where I peer inward at myself and think, why are you still even alive? He has spent more than half of his life in prison, and now he sees the events of the past from a different perspective. Despite his mother's mistrust in his healing, Paris says there are lessons he has already learned. It's my family. There's guilt and remorse mixed in with that because not only I didn't do something stupid and get locked away, and that's why I'm missing my family. I did something that tore my family apart and took me away from them. And it's something that I can't fix, ever. And that's what I miss the most. Justice and medical reports will be in charge of assessing whether Paris is telling the truth and wants a new chance out of prison or is he still using his intelligence to manipulate and finish the plan that began at the age of 13?